Cardiovascular disease is the most common cause of death worldwide. The thing is, that's an umbrella term that encompasses many different dysfunctions and diseases. So the one we're going to focus on in today's episode is the heart attack, the one you're probably most familiar with. And unfortunately, the reason behind that is because it's very likely that you, a friend or a family member will experience a heart attack at some point in your life. So we are going to go over the basic anatomy, physiology, and the mechanics that underlie a heart attack. Let's do this. A heart attack is more properly known as a myocardial infarction. Now an infarction is simply when tissue of any kind is experiencing necrosis or death due to a lack of oxygen. In the case of a heart attack, that's brought on by a lack of blood which carries that oxygen. So in order to best understand what's causing this infarction to begin with, we first need to look at the mechanics of the heart. How does blood properly under normal operating circumstances move through the heart? So in front of me, I have a human heart. Now you're gonna notice a couple things about it right off the bat. Now, first off, we've made a couple incisions. You can see that I've been able to look into the left ventricle here, as well as the right ventricle. And this is just so we could see inside of these awesome cavities and also see the thickness of the muscular wall, which you can see that this left ventricular wall is much thicker than this right ventricular wall. But if we're gonna learn how blood travels through the heart, we have to start right here in the right atrium. So maybe it's best to start like this. This side is going to be the right side of the heart and then this is gonna be the left side. The right side is deoxygenated and the left side is going to be oxygenated. There's two upper portions called the atria and then there's two lower portions called the ventricles. The atria are what gather blood from coming from pretty much everywhere else in the body on the right side and the left atrium gathers it coming back from the lungs once it gathered oxygen. So this right here is that right atrium. This would be gathering blood coming from your head, your lower body, your arms, literally everywhere, including the heart muscle itself. All the blood that's been used and is now deoxygenated is going to pool into that right atrium. When that right atrium contracts, it's going to push its blood through this valve right here called the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. This right ventricle will then contract and it's gonna push it through. It's kind of hard to tell, but this should be more tubular. We've cut it in order for you to see this valve here called the pulmonary valve, but this tubular structure is called the pulmonary trunk. And this would then go on and branch out into blood vessels that would permeate the lungs. So it's gonna go ahead and get oxygen. And when it comes back, like I mentioned earlier, it's going to go into this left atrium. Once it goes from the left atrium into its next spot, it's going through this valve here called the mitral valve. We are now inside the left ventricle, which when this contracts, will now push it out this gigantic blood vessel here called the aorta. And this is the biggest blood vessel in the body. This is about the size of a garden hose. Now, I, the way I've always taught it, when we're discussing how the heart works, at least in terms of delivering blood, it's best to think of it with the analogy of a airplane experiencing an issue with cabin pressure. So you can all picture the oxygen mask drops down and we've all been told those instructions. You put the mask on yourself before you put it on any children or anyone in need. The idea being if you pass out, you're not gonna be able to help them. The same goes for the heart. It's going to deliver blood to itself before it delivers blood to any other tissue. And it does that through these tiny little arteries called the coronary arteries. And we can see those right here. So again, here's that aorta and branching directly off of it are these coronary arteries and we can follow them. And what you're gonna see is they are going to go down and start distributing oxygenated blood to the heart muscle itself. Again, the heart muscle needs to be working. We should also take note that heart muscle or cardiac muscle is a very specialized type of muscle. There are three types of muscle in the body. You have smooth, cardiac, and skeletal. Smooth muscle you find in things such as the digestive tract, the urinary tract, the uterus. 
these are structures you're not in charge of. You know, I, I can't remember the last time I said to my stomach, release your contents, right? That's, the, that's something that happens naturally. Skeletal muscle, on the other hand, you're in charge of. That's what I'm using to move around right now. Cardiac muscle is involuntary, just like smooth muscle, but it has a lot of proteins in a similar fashion to skeletal muscle. The thing about cardiac muscle is that it is capable of something called self-excitation, which basically means it can contract without input from the nervous system. And that's important because if the heart stopped beating, say if you got some type of head injury, then that would be a problem because even if you could have survived, you're not gonna survive anymore because the heart wasn't getting the message from the brain. So the body understood this and makes it so the heart will continually beat even if there is some issue with the brain. So in terms of a heart attack, what's occurring is an issue with these coronary arteries, right? So let's say that these coronary arteries start getting blocked up with cholesterol, plaque, or maybe even a blood clot that is dislodged from somewhere else in the body, traveled into these coronary arteries, plugged one up, and started causing a blockage preventing oxygen and blood from getting to the tissue. This causes necrosis or tissue death, that infarction. When we say myocardial infarction, we're talking the muscle of the heart is experiencing tissue death due to a lack of oxygen. Now, depending on which coronary artery is going to get the blockage, you're going to have different issues with the heart attack, right? You see the heart, at least the ventricles, beat from the bottom up. It does that in order to push the blood out of the heart. So if you have a heart attack down here, you're gonna have a real difficult time pushing the blood out because these cells are now dead. Again, myocardial cells, cardiac muscle is so specialized that it cannot divide. You can't make any more of it. You're born with as many cells as you're ever gonna have. So if they die, they're gone forever. But let's say you have a heart attack somewhere else, maybe in an upper part of the ventricle or maybe in an atria. Definitely still gonna be severe. Definitely still gonna be a problem, but it's going to be less severe than say if you had a massive heart attack down in this apex or lower portion of the heart. Where you have the heart attack matters, the amount of distribution, the spread, how much area of the heart is experiencing the problem is also going to be a big issue. Now, if you're having a heart attack, you're gonna experience differing symptoms. And this is interesting too, because even men and women can experience differing symptoms. Um, but typically, as we all have probably heard, you're gonna experience pain going down the left arm. It can go up into the jaw and in the neck, pec, uh, pectoralis pain. There's different types of symptoms that are going to manifest. Sometimes they're more subtle and sometimes they're more extreme. Men on average tend to experience more breathlessness than women do. But, and, and women have even been known to experience right arm pain as well. But the most important thing to understand about a heart attack is the sooner you get treatment, the better. Heart muscle can survive without oxygen for a little bit of time. I mean, it's not gonna be a great amount of, uh, it's not gonna be really great for it. I mean, we have around 30 minutes or so. I mean, it starts dying in that time frame. but if you can get uh, proper care, get to the hospital within a 30 minute window, it is possible to reverse a lot of the effects of that heart attack. And then it just comes down to trying to solve the problem of the plaque or the blood clots that caused it to begin with. But hopefully this has helped you understand what's going on with the heart attack a little bit better. Now, I also want to let you know that we are now selling merchandise. If you want to wear this very schnazzy hoodie like me, you can go ahead and see that we have a shop down below the videos. So, just be sure to let us know if there's any other type of merchandise or anything you'd like to see or wear in, uh, in the future. Also, be sure to always let us know what you wanna see in future videos. We are always open to more ideas. But until the next video, I will see you.